The horrors are never ending with this movie, yet still I remain silly. And remaining silly throughout time is no small feat. Aging is something, even if we clock out early, we still kind of have to do it. Around 25 to 28 years old, this is when the process really starts taking off as your cells have officially had enough genetic information cut into, causing dysfunction to rise. Because of this, healthy lifestyles that limit damage to your genetics along with decreasing activities that could cause damage to your genetics, you know, anything that's actually considered fun, is actually somewhat important. But what if you had no choice? What if time itself literally passed before your eyes in a way that aged you 50 years in one day? Well, then that would totally blow. In the events of old, it's an M. Night movie, so uh, definitely put a helmet on for this one, a family and a few others would head out to a beach where something strange began to happen. As the offspring went from early younglings to pre-adults in a matter of hours, it became clear something horrific was taking place. As an hour passed, issues in the group would all arise that were age-related, but the question remained, what exactly was causing this, and why is it the most ridiculous thing that doesn't even follow its own rules that it established. Well, let's discuss that in today's episode. But before getting into that, I want to thank you guys as always for watching. Your support here is absolutely baller and is greatly appreciated. If you want to watch movies with the Discord, which we all do together, then I eventually cover them, uh, you should click on the Discord link. It's in the description. Also, I've said it before, I'll say it again, I'm bringing games back to the channel because I actually started a gaming channel not too long ago and I've been kind of doing stuff over there and there's a lot of science that I do real time over there as well. It's called Roanoke Games and it's in the description as well, but apart from that, let's get into it. We kick off our story with this being universal. Copyright fight inbound as per usual. Hearing birds calling and something chirping, probably birds, the subtitles appear a bit off, we are in a tropical paradise in a van. The daughter, Mado, or Maddox or whatever, is singing in the back and the son Trent is just straight up chilling. Fun fact, the song that uh, Maddox is singing or Mado or whatever, it's actually sung by M. Night's daughter. I believe it's like one of her songs, so not only is the man himself putting himself in his movies, but his family as well. What a giga chad. The mom mentions how her singing is really good and she's excited to hear what her voice is when she grows up. I have no idea why, but people singing in enclosed vehicles just straight up activates my almonds. It's super annoying. Like It's like, oh, look at me, I can sing. Like Nobody really cares, actually. And again, maybe that's just me. Trent talks about how it's taking forever to get there as the mom tells him to stop wishing away this moment. The mom is checking work stuff, allegedly. More on that treachery later. And uh, I'm trying to wish away her moments. Pulling up to the resort, the manager of this resort is super happy that they are there. As the younglings get out of the car, the adults are handed cocktails based on their food and beverage choices. Also, that woman has got some massive veins in her shoulders and biceps, like she should start lifting and get totally swole. As they walk through the building, it seems the resort is still sort of being set up. The resort youngling comes over to talk to Trent and Maddox. Idlib tells them that his uncle is actually the resort manager, and then he hits it off with Trent as they both start just doing similar things. So as they skip along like huge nerds, they then head to the room to set up for the night. As the dad reads through a pamphlet, the mom is out there looking upsetty. The dad then reads that there are actually no younglings allowed on the beach as she sits there smiling, which she's a huge loser, so it doesn't really matter. More on that later. Out at the beach, Trent and Idlib then go talk to everyone as they run across a chef, a dentist, and a cop. Walking into the water, Idlib and Trent play a truth-telling game as Trent says eventually they can go to the same college together and pay mortgages. True. Now I'm paying a mortgage, and brother, let me tell you, oh the joys. That night, the parents then talk about how they are splitting and how the mom has a benign growth. They wanted to give the younglings one last vacation, and she tells him because he's always thinking about the future, it makes her feel unseen. Bruh. Well, I guess someone has to think about decisions being made, right? I mean, uh, maybe she should use a little more of the thinking of the future and a little less thinking with my dick. Arrogance. Also, the younglings are just straight up listening to this, so, uh, yeesh. Anyways, Idlab gives a code to Trent, and he says he needs to figure it out, which then it says ice cream eating contest tomorrow. Meanwhile, out of the beach, a man affectionately known as Midsize Sedan, literally his name, sits there as one woman runs out into the water buck nude. The next day, we meet Miss Calcium Deficiency as her daughter Kara is told to sit up at the table or she will be unattractive, which is very healthy for, you know, a youngling to hear that. The doctor is there with his mother, wife, and offspring. Calcium Deficiency then makes a pass at the waiter, which is super weird as the doctor just doesn't really seem to care. He's just used to it. All right, then. So the manager now comes over to the family and says there's a private beach if they wanted to go there. Idlib watches them as then he's escorted away by his uncle. While that's happening, a woman is having a grand mal seizure, also known as a tonic clonic seizure, which can be fairly dangerous. As she sits up, she's immediately given a drink. Yes, that's exactly what she needs. So while the seizure symptoms are, are kind of still there, this is something that you definitely need to understand. There could be lingering mood changes and fatigue, and it's typically over within a few hours, but it can last days. But the fact is, it's not over in just a few seconds. Actually, though, interestingly, I read about an electrical device that they can implant into the brain that will send electrical stimulation to the area of the brain experiencing the seizure, at least when it's detected, which will stop the seizure almost immediately. Glad to see progress is being made in that area. But regardless,
regardless, seizures are nothing to play around with, and while not likely, they can still absolutely be fatal, and everybody's just like, oh, not a big deal. So, uh, this is all for your information, but if someone has a seizure that's over about five minutes, you need to take them to the hospital immediately. So, in the van, Prisca is on her phone once again, talking to work, no doubt. Why is Domino's Pizza texting you at 3 a.m. to see if you're still up? No time to think about that, as M. Knight then drives them to the beach with the doctor's family as well. Heading over, M. Knight then opens up the gate to the nature preserve, as then they all head down with a ton of food. Hoofing it with the beach stuff, they walk, and then past a dead tree that's just randomly through there, they then continue on through the rocks. As they do, they emerge to a private beach, which would actually be pretty nice. Interestingly, if you look up one of the sides, you can see a line of dead trees, which is some foreshadowing. But, from what we can find and what is stated, this concept would make it a recent event and not one that has existed forever, as suggested by the resort people, which we will discuss later. So, they get everything set up and they're ready to hang as calcium deficiency just goes and takes pictures of herself. Guy looks out and then sees Coral in the distance as Prisca asks him, oh, what book am I reading? Which he doesn't know. And then he's like, okay, well, I need to tell you something. And he just goes, never mind. Basically, the passive aggressiveness in this couple is super lame. So Maddox then spots mid-sized sedan over there as the dad says to leave him alone. He's on vacation. Kara and the grandmother then head out in the water as Trent, Maddox, and Kara plays freeze tag as Trent plays with action figures later, showing that he has been listening to his parents' fights. <laughs> That's a classic. Probably gonna need some therapy for that one. So the younglings then run over to the sandbar and spot stuff from the other people who had been there prior. As Trent goes to the tidal waters, there are no fish. There is, however, someone who floats by that is, like, supposed to be drowned, but if you see her arm, she most definitely grabs Trent, like, puts her arm around him, and you can actually see one of her fingers move. You'll see another version of this later, which I just want to point it out because I'm petty like that. I think it's hilarious. Welcome to the show. So, she's done so as the men look and Midsize Sedan walks up with a bloody nose. Everyone sort of looks at him as they cover her up with a towel. Midsize Sedan says that she swam out alone, and then he's questioned by the doctor. Calcium deficiency says that she's the main victim for having to see that as she, like, not the person who got got, but her, as she complains about literally everything. Trent then runs over to his mom and says his bathing suit hurts him. Guy also calculates people's risks based on their profiles for like an insurance company, so that's why his son is sort of like that. You know, running up and asking him their name, occupation, how much they make before taxes, and list of fears. Kind of sounds like the government. So with everyone sufficiently freaked, they try to call out with their cellular devices, but there is no reception. Caesar lady and the male nurse arrive, finding the body as well. The doctor says mid-sized sedan is somehow involved. Calcium deficiency runs up saying, oh, something's wrong with your mother. And realizing the beach sort of sucks, they kind of just completely walked into a massive clusterfuck. Mr. Nurse goes to walk back through the rocks and then blacks out almost immediately. We're going to call him Merce. So there is no escaping the beachhead. Not ideal. The doctor's mother then starts talking about how she's going into shock as Prisca runs up asking the doctor to check out her son as something's wrong with him too. As we see them though, they are looking a bit more lanky. Trent then says he sees something shiny on the hillside. Charles's mother then flatlines out as calcium deficiency talks about how she did nothing with mid-sized sedan continuing to bleed. So it seems like the whole group is just having like a barrel of fun over this. Officially, we meet Jaren, the male nurse, or the nurse, if you will, and Patricia, the psychologist, or Patriciologist. Not going to be using that. Jaren then guesses ages extremely well due to his profession, but uh, he's actually wrong about the offspring. Trent then says his best friend is his sister, which, <laughs> nerd! <laughs> like, if he actually had the op, he would have definitely been the guy that takes his cousin to prom. I wouldn't know, though. I didn't go to prom, so I guess, uh, who's the bigger nerd on that one? Prisca then walks up and doesn't recognize her offspring at first, as they are now teenagers. Guy runs up saying that they should leave as he realizes his offspring are way older than they should be. Mid-sized sedan that nopes out of there, or at least tries to, as the doctor's like, see? And then gives chase to a guy that they, uh, assume took out somebody who's actually pretty buff too. Like, I'm not sure I'd be running out to that guy. But both of them then go unconscious as well, and then he says it was intense and internal cranial pressure, as it's stated, again, by the good doctor. They have an argument over how they should get out of there, and the real question is, have y'all just considered swimming? You shouldn't listen to me, because that's a bad idea. So as everyone tries to get off the beach, they all wake back up on the sand, having blacked out. How do they get back out after they passed out in the rocks is a very good question, uh, but there appears to be no escape through the rocks. Prisca then says only the younglings are reacting. Guess again there, gal. The doctor pulls a knife at this point, and then slices mid-sized sedan across the face, and he's starting to lose it, saying, oh, he was trying to hurt me and I also don't really know why I did that. Miss Sai Sedan says the wound doesn't hurt anymore, he must be in shock, and that's because it's already healed. And I mean, localized? That would be pretty sweet for healing wounds. The issue becomes if every cell in your body is doing the exact same thing, I mean, you know, this is not exactly ideal. So medium-sized truck explains that the woman that he was there with earlier was sick. She was diagnosed with multiple sclerosis, or just MS, which you may be curious as to what that even is. Essentially, you have a covering on your neurons known as the myelin sheath. This sheath aids in nerves communicating efficiently 
efficiently, the immune system will actually attack this sheath on the neurons in the brain and in your body, which your body will then pretty much heal it, but eventually this can cause permanent deterioration of the nerve, which as you might have guessed is not ideal. This can lead to like weakness and even paralysis in some cases. And there are medications that can slow the disease or alter it, but as far as we know, we haven't been able to cure it outright. The psychologist though says that they're all emotionally shaky and why this is happening is they just, they're experiencing some sort of group delusion, right? She believes that they can leave the beach, but they think that they can't, so they're stuck. Yeah, I'm not really sure that ideology holds up there, gal, but mainly because of the blackout you experience moving through the rocks. The daughter then changes into her mother's swimsuit because she's basically an adult now as we see the dead trees. Now this is important because it shows this was a very recent event. There is no way this began like from the beginning of time because otherwise there would be no trees left. It'd be this area of influence that essentially would have just been sand and rock. They wouldn't have been able to grow in the time frame required because if they had, you would see the trees constantly growing and then falling in the background. And it's also important to understand that the amount of pollen from the other trees, there'd be so much inbreeding with these trees growing as quickly as they are that eventually the tree would just die. I also want you to notice the trees are not decaying after they're just standing there dead. And this will also be important later. So Merce then starts saying that they need to swim out of there and then just turn and swim up the shoreline to go get help. Toyo Tacoma and Maddox then walk off as fully loaded truck says he has a clotting issue with his blood. Maddox talks about how she doesn't feel the same that she used to. Puberty! Ugh, God, puberty sucked. My favorite part was the acne, although getting swole was pretty fun. Everyone then uh, basically groups up at the behest of Patricia as they talk about who they are and why they are there. Priska thinks it's a virus and it only really appears to be affecting the offspring as then she realizes she can't catch her breath. As she stands there, she passes out and they see the benign tumor is not so benign as it's grown to a crazy amount in just the time that they've been there. The doctor uses his knife to cut her, but before he does though, he's like, oh, did you know Jack Nicholson was in a film with Marlon Brando? Cool, bro. I have a friend who's actually an anesthesiologist and he says that is one of the most important things to mention right before any surgery. So standard operation procedure has been upheld. So you may continue, good doctor. All right, so that was a pretty stupid joke, but we all know he's starting to lose his mind. But what flavor of mind loss is it? We will find out later. Calcium deficiency says, oh no, as she knows what kind of choose your own adventure book brain degradation issue this actually is. But ignoring that, he makes the incision, which instantly closes back up. So they try to keep the incision open. The doctor mentions the same factoid as earlier, as then he recuts and then pulls out an absolute behemoth of a tumor. The wound instantly heals back up as the mom awakens. Compact vehicle then goes and checks out the woman from earlier, who is now a skeleton, which is the first huge discrepancy in this movie. Well, except for the trees. So there's going to really be several, but for real though, they say something later like, it can't be both of these things at once. So remember the trees in the background, how seemingly they are not decaying? So here we have the human form, which decays faster in the presence of whatever is going on, yet the trees in the background are totally fine. You cannot have some decay while other life forms are not decaying, unless it's a proximity thing, which even then, I would say this is not likely at all. I think it's just a mess up, and we will see something else like this, which is the galaxy brain level take later. So as the group discusses, time itself appears affected by the beach, but I doubt this to be the case. If time itself were affected, then our perception of time would be affected as well. Sort of similar to how, if you're approaching a black hole, the generalized thinking is, is if you and your friend were separated and you were just a little closer, the friend would actually watch you move towards the black hole and stop and then phase shift red until you disappeared. The process could only take a few minutes for your friend to kind of observe, but once you pass the event horizon, due to the gravity well that you are approaching, the time passage may seem like your entire lifespan as the physics of reality is warped. Two different perceptions of time based on the gravity affecting the fabric of time. On this beach, however, the gravity well is not present as this would destroy the planet. The perception of time passing as a day overhead is still the same. And in fact, it's just your standard Earth day. A day is still a day, but what is happening is the day is accelerated according to your own internal biology. And this means this is a biological issue. Time is unaffected. The internal clock of the body is sped up. The implications of this are horrifying, but it's funny because again, the movie does not follow its own rules that it sets. We'll dive into that ludicrousness soon. So Trent and Kara are just sort of hanging out in the tent fort they made, being young adults, which is a recipe for disaster. They engage in young adult activity, as Priska says, one hour must be around 2.33 years. Their cells, as a result, are rapidly dividing and aging, which sucks. But hilariously, Priska brings up how, well, you know, why are our hair and nails dividing? Shouldn't they be, like, shouldn't they be growing crazily? Jaren's like, oh, those cells are dead. They don't change much. Uh, okay, but... The the living cells that produce it should be affecting hair growth and nails. Also, the person who just changed into a skeleton inside of three hours clearly
literally having non-living cells would like a word with you. Also, what about the trees that aren't decaying in a few hours? Like, this movie doesn't, it doesn't make any sense. But since it's been stated, let's talk about cellular division real quick. From what we can tell, every hour, as stated, is 2.33 years. For this to work, several biological parameters must be met. It's not enough for cells just to rapidly divide. Cells must also be aging as well because they need to live out a normal lifespan. Every 7 to 10 years, all 36 trillion of your cells, if you're male, in your body are completely replaced. I think it's like 30 trillion if you're female. But that means every 2 to 3 hours on this beach, you are a completely new person. In fact, it's always been interesting if nothing original is left of you from 7 to 10 years ago, are you still the same person? The same concept as if your consciousness is never interrupted, but you're knocked unconscious which is the first time it's really interrupted. Are you still the same person when you wake back up? It's kind of strange. Anyways, where was I? Ah, yes. So if this mechanism was the standard lifespan, but increased mitosis, then that means you would quite literally just become a giant cancerous blob if your cells didn't die with the same ratio. So for this to work, cellular degradation must enforce this same ratio of creation versus cell death in the body that is standard for life. And because of this, I believe it must function on a genetic level, which we will get into that issue here momentarily, but the main one being there's a real problem that would exist that is not mentioned anywhere in the movie, and this is heat generation. Uh, the process of mitosis would basically be increased drastically at the behest of the cyclin genes, and as this happens, it creates and generates heat. We are endothermic animals. It doesn't really matter. The process itself generates heat. But also, you should know that there are other genes involved in your mitosis process, but it's just going to sound like a bunch of random numbers and letters to you, which I'm sure you would not find all too interesting. Let me know if you actually want me to like go into detail as far as that, but it's just, there's nothing really to remember. Anyways, something is affecting these genes in order for all the cell to almost immediately go into cellular replication as soon as the cellular division is completed. The other side of this creation is death. CD3 and CD4 genes, which are promoters of cellular apoptosis, would get involved much faster than normal as these cells are created. This in turn could cause cells to rupture, resulting in their premature death. CD9, for just for reference, stands in the way of cell death, and should you have a mutation that involves this gene, the cell will die prematurely, which is a self-limiting issue as obviously you don't want that cell replicating too much because if it's just planning on clocking out early, I mean, you don't really want that. So now what's interesting is, does genetic damage happen during that hour that the cells are live? I think very likely it's a solid no. As a cell lives, it's good that eventually it clocks out under normal circumstances because genetic damage can build up from exposure to chemicals, radiation from the sun, and that bacon that you just ate. Lots of things can damage your genetics. However, given that only an hour passes before cell death on the beach, this means the cell is likely, or at least highly likely, likely still completely viable and had very little cell damage happen to it in this time frame. Because again, remember, time is not physically affected, just the cells. But you might be wondering, well, Roanoke, if that's the reason, why do they age? And that's a great question. And this comes down to our cells not being perfectly adept at cellular division. It's sort of a two-prong issue. First, it's known as the Hayflick limit. Within each of our cells is the ability to divide about 40 to 60 times before the cell reaches a point that too many genetic issues have built up. Taking a copy of a copy of a copy becomes sort of an issue that amplifies over time. So like remember when you were a youngling and you would get a scan of a scan of a scan of some homework? Eventually it's gonna look terrible, right? It's the same process that happens with cells. Like the original scan of Mr. Incredible versus the one where like eventually he's the meme where he looks deep fried and he's black and white. You know how terrible those? That's basically what happens as your cells keep dividing. And that's what your genetic makeup looks like as they keep dividing. I'm definitely on, I don't know, probably like the third image at this point with my own genes because I'm 30 too, so it is what it is. But this process happens because your genome needs to be replicated and either mutations have already happened during the cell's lifespan or errors will occur during the replication process. DNA polymerase, along with other fact-checking enzymes, can only be so precise and this allows for issues to slip through the cracks. Once a cell has solidified a mistake though in your genome, say at the grand old age of 32, the mistakes in the genome will follow you all the way until you drop unless it's mutated again by some other new mutation. If it happens to be on a critical area, like a tumor suppression gene, then the genetic error will likely allow for cancer in the future. And that's what blows about being young, but also great about being young. A lot of the things you do really do follow you into old age. So take care of your meat suit now. It'll become a reflection of your choices that you made when you were younger as you get older. Sort of like a new car, right? You buy it new, make sure you change the oil, keep up with the maintenance, do everything you can. And then 20, 30 years down the line, you still have a functional car. You treat it like crap the first year you got it, that thing's gonna fall apart. 
apart, although planned obsolescence at this point means all cars fall apart. New cars suck. Buy yourself a 1996 Tacoma. Anyhow, with a beach, again, the issues do not, like your genetics aren't having a buildup of environmental issues inducing mutations and errors into the genome, but through just the replication process itself, that's where most of the problems are going to stem from. So as the cell divides, a critical area becomes affected, and these are actually known as telomeres, or this junk DNA as it's called, which we now know contains genes that are in fact not junk DNA, but it gets cut off little by little as each cell divides. Now this is not the only thing that ages you quite clearly as mutations can happen in the genome and information is lost, but it is a big part of it. So over time, eventually it will reach the point where none of these telomeres are left. And when this happens, eventually as a cell divides, this will cause a cell to start cutting into the DNA that is more necessary for your survival. And this induces large amounts of damage to a cell's functionality, which in turn, as you might guess, is not ideal. So the question now becomes, what is causing the cell to rapidly divide and how might this be affecting the telomeres? Well, I'll leave you with this as we jump back into the story. There was actually a set of twins. One brother became an astronaut and the other was back on Earth as he did not choose to be an astronaut. Now, this is off the top of my head, but if I remember correctly, he stayed in space the longest and the effects of what happened to him were observed. As he came back, obviously getting used to Earth's gravity was something he had to do, but he had all the standard lingering effects. Bone mass diminished, less muscle mass, inner ear problems with balance for a while as the body had to reacclimate to gravity. And then they tested his genome and they found something interesting. His telomeres had lengthened. Scientists aren't exactly sure why his telomeres gained information, but it does potentially shed light on the idea that something on Earth causes our cells to lose information as they divide, but possibly in space, during cellular division, our cells could add information back to telomeres. We will discuss more of that here momentarily, as it really kind of highlights the reality of this cracked out movie. Also, it should be known, while that does sound pretty sweet, like, oh, we'll just send people up and they'll reverse age, there's a lot of radiation in space and we don't really know how to block it, so you're definitely getting your genome turned to Swiss cheese. Anyways, so since that woman was swimming, this may imply that due to her cellular age advancing, uh, she was just swimming and then her illness overtook her quickly and then she drowned. Oh, well, that blows. Or it may actually hint at something else. So Merce is wrong about the nails, just in a roundabout way of saying it. So Mr. Lexus LX450 says that they age 50 years in one day. Jaren says that they must need to reacclimate to the time change, which is why they black out. They need to spend at least 20 years acclimating to that. And everybody's like, mm, I don't want to do that. So Trent and Kara, having smashed, now approach the rest of the group. As she walks, though, well, she's Perganonette. Congrats on being a father, Trent. Charles then asks, asks the Merce why he's looking at him like he wants to steal his wallet. All right there, bro, just calm down. So just like that, a bouncing baby boy and or girl, no idea which, is born in the fight against communism. Calcium deficiency then runs off as Trent screams about never getting a divorce. Trauma in real time, as calcium deficiency is now a grandmother as the new offspring immediately starts crying. Time moves too fast for offspring to survive on the beach as even a minute passing causes it not to thrive. And you may be wondering why. Well, the cells of newborn actually are dividing faster and more frequently in order to grow grow the body of a person even after they are born. As they age, specifically once hitting puberty and reaching the maximum height and standard weight, they will have their cells start dividing more slowly. And this is why at first they assumed only the offspring were affected because it was more noticeable. This does mean the parent cells are still dividing, but they're dividing slower than their offspring, but not really by that much. So while that crap is going on, the doctor then starts stabbing the sand as the nurse yells at him. Charles then starts losing it as he tells calcium deficiency to go put on some makeup because I guess she looks hideous. <laughs> Nice job there, bro. So a zoom in of calcium deficiency does show that she is aging as it's beginning to show. Large electric scooter then sits next to mid-sized stream as calcium deficiency talks about a dude named Giuseppe. Imagine being born and your name is Giuseppe. Bummer, bro. Anyway, the doctor absolutely loses at this point, taking out key truck. Maybe his healing factor will... No, it, it doesn't. He's totally gone now. If it hits something vital, you don't come back. So they approach the doctor now and then take the knife from him, definitely looking like he's losing it. Merce then brings up how Patricia needs her medicine and how thank God she hasn't had a seizure yet. Merce then runs in and starts swimming because he's like, we need to go get help now. So as they look up at the cliff's edge, they discuss who should climb the rock. Charles starts talking about something with his mother, who's definitely gone, holding a bone to his head as clearly he's got some sort of mental disorder. They then start talking about how they all had won a sweepstakes as the company has their passports, they sent a car for them, and they took a private plane. Maddox now brings up how Prisca was thinking of leaving her dad and she frames it as, oh, I didn't want you to suffer. But really, Prisca just blows. We know it isn't about the offspring suffering. Come on now. Way to pass the buck to them. Like, oh, you see, you were suffering, so I had to go find a new dude. Like, bro, nobody's buying that crap. So Maddox is upset as then she walks off, and then she gives herself a pep talk for some reason as she goes into the water. As she does this, though, oh, look, the Merce comes floating by. He apparently has drowned, which, as
as they pull him in, you'll actually see him sitting up because a wave hit his head. This also made me laugh. So you cannot walk through the rocks, you cannot swim your way out with going without like going unconscious, and as Patricia cries over Merce, Trent and Carol walk off to go tug. She says that this isn't fair. Correct. He takes the offspring, which is basically just a skeleton now, and then starts burying it terribly, and also the trees in the background still haven't started decaying. Kara at this point then says, I'm gonna escape, and then she starts climbing the wall. Everyone tells her not to climb, but come on now. Clearly everyone is curious to see if that's the way out, and then she says she's gonna make it. She gets up pretty high, but then stops. She immediately blacks out and then falls to her end. Bummer. So really there's no way to actually escape out in the open. Trent then runs over and finds her Dunzo as him and his dad engage in one of the most awkward hugs imaginable. With everyone visibly aging, Charles stands over at the wall just facing it as Patricia says she had a fight with her sister and she needs to apologize so she needs to get out of there. But as she starts getting ready to go, she then has a massive seizure which flatlines her out as a result. Charles then watches, not helping at all. As Guy looks around though, his vision then starts immediately blurring. He has hit the glaucoma stage. The lenses are only good for so long in her eyes, it is kind of a hilarious joke. Calcium deficiency then comes out saying that she can't protect Kara anymore, and my question is, when were you protecting her in the first place? That evening, Trent then argues with his dad over swimming out there as Patricia goes deaf in her left ear. Yep, that's horrifying. So calcium deficiency goes and then checks her appearance and realizes she's developing a hunchback. With Guy sitting there with his blurry vision and Prisca having a hard time hearing him, he brings up the text messages that he found. She had been found out to be a cheating doucher. She apologizes, which, <laughs> okay then. Guy then says, no, you deserve someone better than that guy that you're going for. And let me make a correction here. Nah, brah. She actually deserves that entirely. In fact, a case could be made if you really wanted to get into it. She actually deserves less because she is a cheater. Imagine going out the side like the confines of your relationship and losing all character. Big cringe. Then again, maybe that's just my opinion on the matter. So now that she's aged, she says she would rather be with him. You know, guy, I think you deserve better. Never waste your time with someone who's a cheater. Danny, I just don't like cheaters. Moving on. So Maddox and Trent then check the area where other people's stuff were, or would that be was? Hmm, grammatically interesting. But regardless, they find a book that someone else had written. Someone seems to think that there were special minerals in the area that cause the cells to age. Hmm, could be possible. However, whoever it was that wrote it down, they also had all the names and addresses of the people who were there. Trent then sees the camera in the distance as he says they are being recorded. That night, as they sit there as a family, Guy looks over and sees Charles coming at him with a knife, but his vision is completely screwed. Charles is completely spazzing out, and Prisca doesn't hear it as she's deaf in that ear, as then Charles starts slicing Guy. But the wounds heal almost instantly, like, bro, get up and fight back. Stop shielding, go on the offensive. Prisca then tells the younglings to hide, but you have a son who's now a young man? Y'all can overpower this douche canoe is all I'm saying. So Maddox and Trent then run into the rocks, hearing calcium deficiency in there, as then he lights a match and sees her as she begins approaching. She seems to be having a breakdown over Kara, but mostly her own appearance. She drops a rock on her arm and then breaks it, and then it heals in the wrong position. <laughs> Good God! So her illness, when uh, she was young, was manageable, but the osteocytes, osteoclasts, osteoblasts, and bone lining cells really had issues obtaining calcium, which is why she has the moniker calcium deficiency. She would eventually like basically form a brittle bone disease that would then heal, which would be horrific. So she follows them into the rock tunnel, and this part kind of makes me laugh only because of how ridiculous it is. Like only in an M. Night Shyamalan, Shyamalan whatever movie would this happen. She starts thrashing, which then breaks her arms and legs into like unrecognizable tangles. Like stop thrashing. Prisca then comes back to protect Guy as she slashes Charles with a rusty knife, inducing tetanus. Once this bacteria is introduced into your body, it will produce a toxin that will go on to block nerve signals from the spinal cord, causing the muscles to spasm and lock. In fact, if you ever look up how the Roman soldiers had to deal with it, really bad, because you could get it for literally no reason as a Roman soldier. Oh, well, I picked up my sword wrong. Yep, there's a cut, and now I have tetanus, and I'm gone. Really, warfare back in the day was brutal. So, as the bacteria spreads to the body, though, this causes him to lock up and drop from the blood poisoning which is not a great way to go. As the family sits there, which by the way, that lockup could break bones. Anyways, as the family sits there, Guy and Prisca have just kind of trauma bonded, which again, best three weeks of your life. And since this is going to be their last evening together, hey, it worked out permanently. Any other situation like a normal lifespan, results may vary. So the family sits there together with the dad saying he can't remember what they even fought about or what he was angry about, but he's not angry anymore. Which, allow me to introduce an absolute Chad. There was a 99-year-old who ditched his wife 
wife of 77 years because she cheated 60 years prior. I believe that's how you do it. So as they sit there, Guy then drops out of the race earlier from Maddox singing M. Night Daughter's song earlier, mirroring life in general though. Prisca then goes for a little while longer before dropping as well, which is typical for people who have been together for life, also known as lifers. So the offspring survived the night, but now they are considerably older. Checking their hands, they're probably in their late 30s, maybe early 40s. My hands sort of look like that, which means I'm aging as well. Maddox then says that they have about 13 hours left to live. Trent asks if they should just keep trying to escape, as she's like, yeah, we probably should. And he's like, well, let's build a sandcastle first. Yeah, waste a few years on it. Why not? So Trent then mentions a message that he decoded from Idlib, and as he checks it, they realize it says that his uncle hates the coral. So as they look out, they assume the coral must protect them from the effects of aging. Swimming out, they begin their dive, and as they approach the coral, they decide not to take a second breath before entering the tunnel of coral. Bro, take that second breath. Trent then sees his sister get stuck, so he heads back to help her, like, bro, just take your shirt off. What are you doing? Realizing she's mega stuck, M. Knight then watches to make sure his actors didn't make it and they did in fact drown, so he doesn't have to worry about paying them. He reports back to his producers, saying the movie is finally over, we don't gotta pay him, and then claims that he watched for a minute and a half. And I mean, maybe watching five minutes would yield safer results? Ah, interns. So he heads back to the van and then goes to the resort. Heading into a lab, a ton of people are in there working with evidence of other trials that went according to plan, along with an expedition that clearly went badly. A rock is displayed and appears to be some sort of importance as it's also contained, either that or it's just a piece of coral. More on that later. The company then wipes everything with everyone associated with the trial as the manager talks about how, while some die, the trials have yielded amazing results towards the creation of medicine. The trial that involved Patricia had the medication that she was administered cure her of her epilepsy. The timing means that would be about 16.5 years without a seizure, which is pretty good. Functionally, she was cured. So that's what the whole beach's purpose is, to run medical trials on people, to test the medicine on them, and rather than follow them for an entire life, which may or may not work, they can actually have the results yielded over a day. He mentions how they will share the medicine with the world, which we all know is going to be for a price, and if it's anything like insulin, probably a huge price, because people at the helm of uh, these things tend to be turbo douchers. So the doctor says that they need to separate the physical ailments from the mental ailments as they lost the blood clot trial due to Charles' schizophrenia, which uh, this in and of itself is odd because typically it is very rare to have schizophrenia develop after the age of 40. For the doctor to develop this means likely they were dealing with Alzheimer's or another form of dementia cropping up, which in turn induced this ailment. The manager then goes on to talk to Idlib, saying that he needs to choose his friends that he assigns rather than the one he wants. As the cop then sits at the resort, Trent approaches him and then hands him the book. As the new arrivals get there, they run through the same gamut as they are given cocktails, but Trent knocks them down and out of her hands, and he says they left them there to die. Oh no, a breach. The cop then interrupts his vacation to call back to work and realizes that all the people in the book are the missing people. So the jig is up, the news is out, they finally found about the illegal mega unethical trials. Trent hands Idlib the message from earlier, proving that it is him, as the whole thing now falls apart. Then back at the coral, we see something of importance. Trent is able to crack the coral as they go for air, but the rock itself cracked that the coral was attached to, which is a little odd, but as they ascend, they have survived with the fish all around them, which means they are out of that area of influence. So they end up making it, as we know. So as they fly in a helicopter, they pass over the coral, and as they fly way too close to that thing, because it needs to be quarantined, like if you get within its area of influ influence, and even if you try to take the helicopter out of there, the pilot's going to black out, which you're going to crash and die. So from here, the government probably just gets involved, continuing the process, except way slower and with way less, I, I don't know, everything that's good. So, you know, it's government. Like, they would definitely keep this running with the same experiments. But thus concludes old. So now that we've made it to the end, we still have to talk about what this even is, what caused it in the first place, and what was the deal with the coral. So don't click off, don't be a giant nerd, it'll be interesting, trust me. So here we have cells dividing. It appears that the telomeres follow a standard pathway as far as being cut off over time. The cells age primarily because of this rather than the buildup of issues over time as is normal. Because of this, I believe it may be something to do with the known static magnetic field. And this would have to be brand new because again, there would be no trees that form, let's say this always exists Existed, right? It would not be able to have any life to kill around it if it's always existed because nothing would be able to grow there in the first place. But remember the astronaut that I mentioned earlier? It seems that the magnetic field causes the cells to have the division levels affected by the localized magnetic field. And this is also the piece that they took 
Something about this field that it's producing, which I do believe is magnetic, is very, very strong, which is also why it was contained in the lab. The higher the magnetic field, the quicker, theoretically, cell division can go up. Now, again, take all of this with a grain of salt. We know time itself isn't being affected, as that would make no sense. <laughs> yes, that would make no sense. None of this makes any sense. But the caveat of this is once the cells expire, they shouldn't decay faster because that makes no sense either. So also the hair and the nails not growing fast also doesn't make any sense unless they are massively nutrient deficient, which is another thing entirely. But they would be starving anyways. And I, don't even get me started on the amount of heat that would produce during the cellular division, the amount of cellular division. This would absolutely cook them. But it's an M. Night movie. So pretending that somehow all of the all of this just works without any negative consequences and focusing only on the genetics of a person it appears the magnetic field causes the genes of a person to become altered forcing an increased rate of division but equally forcing the death of the cell also it's clear the cell is mediated by cyclin and ced genes on life and death and as a result it progresses through a normal lifespan just faster the issue is however the cell could have gone on living much longer but reproduces early and then is killed early forcing the body to hit the hay flick limit much faster than what would normally be projected. Now, obviously, just as a uh, former scientist myself, this would invalidate all of their results because while you wouldn't have the randomness of life, I guess, typically you don't try to take that into account when you're making medications. The problem is everybody's genome is pretty much the same up until they drop, right? I mean, you're aging, obviously, but you're not getting all those random point mutations in your cells or in your genes that are just caused by uh, thymine dimers of, you know, solar radiation hitting it. It's just, it doesn't take into account the randomness of life. I I guess is the best way to put it. So in a perfect situation, yes, the medication could work, which I believe is what they're kind of going for. But the problem is, is once you induce variables that are outside of the test, such as random mutations caused, and I know the sun is there. So obviously sun thymine dimers are being created, but just the randomness of life and like eating food and doing all these things. It's a very, very closed off test, I guess is the best way to put it. So it could create medicine that's good, but I think in a lot of ways, the medicine would not work as it did work on the beach. Anyhow, I believe there is one and now maybe Maybe a couple things that point to the magnetic interference issue, and that is going to be the coral. When leaving the area, it's clear that you exit out of the field of influence of the magnetic field, and this in turn causes neurons in your head to start kind of contending with the issue of buildup of pressure or perceived pressure as they have accommodated to the functioning of the environment. When leaving, that would force changes that your body would have to deal with. Now, you're probably asking, well, shouldn't this have happened when they first got there? And the answer is absolutely it would have happened when they first got there. It should have happened, yet here we are. Again, the movie doesn't play by its own rules. So as you try to leave, the decrease in magnetic field shocks the system, rendering you unconscious because remember, your brain is still affected by magnetic fields. In fact, your whole body is affected by magnetic fields. If somehow you could survive standing on a magnetar, you would be ripped apart by the magnetic field. I also believe another example of why there is some sort of magnetic interference is all the cell phones don't work because it's actively blocking any incoming electromagnetic frequencies, which are going to be radio waves because of the magnetic field. Anyhow, this is the main reason I think you have to swim through the coral. The bubble produced by the magnetic field has to have you gradually leave it. The Merce was right in saying that maybe they should just take a few steps and then stop, then a few more and stop, and this would help them acclimate. By entering the coral, it seems like the field is present there, but possibly gradual enough of a gradient to have the person be able to exit the field and with the water naturally slowing them down. Anyhow, this allows them to acclimate. And you may also be wondering, why would the coral even have this ability in the first place? Well, it seems to me the coral acts as a sort of Faraday cage, except for magnetism, which isn't exactly perfect. It allows for a decrease in the magnetic field, but not entirely the ceasing of it. So to wrap this up all in one perfect sentence, why in God's name did I try to biologically solve an M. Night Shyamalan movie? I don't know. But anyhow, I want to thank you guys for watching. If you enjoyed, leave me a like, would be ball review, and subscribing is a great way to stay updated on when I post. I'll drop my Twitter, Discord, Patreon, and Roanoke Games channel link in the description but speaking of patrons i'd like to thank mine real quick first i'd like to thank our astrophysicist death dancer and feather thank you guys next i'd like to thank our scientists dakota 23 invictus echo lucian dragon metric system and scoot boo thank you guys as well and the rest of my patrons i do appreciate y'all support you are absolutely cool and again thank you so that's gonna do it for me i hope everyone enjoyed and i'll see y'all in the next one